peace and goodwill to you. Please pray for me that my eyes be opened and that I understand the truth. The one place I understand that the truth cannot be found is this belief that the Bible is the sole and entire rule for sacred theology, or the Bible alone is to be followed and based everything off of how it adds up to scripture. There's nothing, nada, zip, nothing in the Bible that says that the Bible is some sort of a sole rule or authority on anything. Jesus Christ said, listen to the church. He didn't say anything about reading the Bible or tell people to read the Bible or anything like that. The apostles didn't go around writing a bunch of scriptures and handing them out to people and telling them to read the Bible or anything like that. Jesus Christ did not leave the early Christians with a Bible. He left them with a church and said, listen to the church and promised the gates of hell would not prevail against that church. And that's where the Bible comes from, okay? The first Christians were not Bible Christians, but Bible Christians, they're a man-made phenomenon. It's a man-made doctrine. It is not taught anywhere in scripture, but what they will quote is a verse in scripture that says all scripture is inspired by God and that it will make you complete. And I agree, just like there are different legs that hold up a chair, if you take away one leg of the chair, the chair falls down. And so a person is complete. They do need some of the scriptures to be complete, but there's some very good things in scripture. However, you know, there's a lot that's outdated. There's a lot that's illustrations, hyperboles, parables, gross exaggerations, and a lot that is very misleading and a lot that is very toxic. I was in a psychiatric war with a guy who had a pornography addiction and he plucked out both of his eyes because Jesus in the scripture says, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better that you enter the kingdom of heaven missing an eye than to enter hell and have both of your eyes where the worm doth not die, he says. And scripture repeatedly talks about there being suffering in the next life, which I don't agree with, but Jehovah's Witnesses and many denominations now say that that's falsehood. And they nobody who claims to be a Bible Christian, I find out, is actually a Bible Christian because they explain away every verse that is incompatible with what they believe. Like the practice of the early Christians believing that the souls in heaven, we are one body in Christ in communion with the saints and that they pray for us and bless us is actually a very scriptural belief because Jesus was seen with Moses and Elijah on Mount Tabor during the transfiguration. Okay. And the book of Revelation says that those who obey the commandments of God are children of this woman who was seen in the sky, who stands on the moon, who is clothed with the sun, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. And the Virgin Mary is often depicted standing on the moon, and the Virgin Mary actually left an image at Guadalupe on cactus fiber of Juan Diego. She told him to pick some Castilian roses in a place where they shouldn't have been growing, show them to the bishop, and a miraculous image on this fiber that should have decomposed hundreds of years ago converted the Aztecs. And all of the Protestant reformation founders combined did not convert as many people in a short amount of time as our lady of guadalupe did with one miracle that's what i love about the virgin mary and even though i don't exactly identify as catholic because i don't follow what goes against my conscience i i will only embrace the dogma that love and bless the spirits follow my conscience do what's right and wrong so i don't identify as catholic but I admire that they actually have devotion to the Virgin Mary and women in heaven because that has been extremely helpful in motivating me to do good deeds and avoid bad deeds. Women can motivate a man to change better than a man can. And just praying to some Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all the time was not motivating me. And all these pastors coming into jails and prisons and correctional facilities never reached me until I started having experiences with women in heaven and the Virgin Mary and praying the rosary and consecrating myself to the Virgin Mary and St. Philomena. By the way, just George gave me this uh, St. Philomena cord. Unfortunately, I, it broke, but uh, I keep it in my pocket and grace can be transmitted from inanimate objects. That's a very biblical thing. And so I uh, was, uh, I associated St. Philomena with leopard skin because I saw this girl wearing leopard skin in front of an anchor, and anchors are associated with St. Philomena, so it, it, it made me say a short prayer to Philomena when I saw that, and then I looked up St. Philomena, and I just associated that girl in leopard skin with Philomena, and I thought they looked similar in images of Philomena, and then I went for a walk to Assumption Church while I was praying to St. Philomena, and there was a woman in front of me wearing a leopard skin bra. 
And then I reached Assumption Church, and it was the feast of St. John Vianney, who worked many miracles. Well, he just happens to blame most of his miracles and attribute them to the intercession of St. Philomena in heaven. Well, the day that that St. Philomena cord arrived, I went out to get the St. Philomena cord, and there was a box of baking soda with a container that had leopard skin on it. And I didn't know there was a St. Philomena cord in the mail when I saw that. So I picked it up. It was leopard honey in a leopard skin container on my porch. I go out to my mailbox and I grab the, bo- the, the item that had the St. Philomena cord and some prayer beads and things like that. And there were some other meaningful items in there as well. And so I find that there's a lot of spirits that are connected to God that intercede for us. And I think it's very harmful for the people that are preaching this Bible alone theology because it's leading people away from the truth. And, and I think I give the Catholic Church a huge thumbs up because it's the only church that dates back to the time of Christ. Jesus said, listen to the Catholic Church, but they have devotion to virtuous women who can lead men to greater zeal and fervor and purity of heart, motivate them to be better men, gentlemen, to be chivalrous, and do things a lot better than some male companion. If I have a beautiful woman that I can honor and bless, and whether I'm doing chores, I do them for her, and whether I'm suffering, I offer up my suffering to her like Our Lady of Fatima requested, you know, that's very helpful. And I've actually been to the National Shrine of St. Philomena. She's the only saint that I've been to a National Shrine in honor of that saint. So it's very special to get that St. Philomena cord. And I've had a lot of coincidences linked to St. Philomena. Like I got out of jail on the feast of St. Philomena, uh, August 11th. And I was with a cellmate named Raven. And I told Raven, I said, because I I had my Bible open to the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the nurse hands us unleavened bread, which are saltine crackers, which are unleavened bread. And she said, I'm not supposed to do this. Well, we both received six crackers. And I said, Raven, what if this is our Feast of Unleavened Bread and one of us gets released tomorrow? Because the Israelites, they ate unleavened bread before they were released from bondage. Uh, I believe it was the following day in Egypt. Feast of Unleavened Bread. So we had our Feast of Unleavened Bread. The following day, the judge released me on my own recognizance, and Raven had a surprise bailout from the Freedom Fund that bails people out who are in trouble for rioting because George Floyd was murdered in the uh, the Twin Cities where I'm from. And so, you know, very interesting things happen, and I've had a lot of experiences that are related to the souls in heaven that helped me, and it's helped me a lot more than just prayers to Jesus Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit. So people are really missing out, not praying the Hail Mary's consecration to the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Blessed Virgin Mary has more miracles that are linked to her and the places she's appeared than Jesus Christ has, at least since the time he ascended into heaven. I don't know of miracles as incredible as those associated with the Virgin Mary. Like at Lourdes, France, the Virgin Mary was appearing to the humble peasant girl Bernadette Subaru. And at that location, the Virgin Mary told St. Bernadette to dig a small hole, and a spring came forth from the ground. And the waters of that spring, eventually people started experiencing miraculous phenomenon in the waters of that spring, so much so that there's a bunch of crutches and there's wheelchairs that are left at the location of the spring at Lourdes, France. And Mary introduced herself as the Immaculate Conception there to St. Bernadette before the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception was defined and a miraculous medal called the medal of the immaculate conception came out that the virgin mary appeared to uh, saint catherine labore and she asked for that medal and she said the pattern and everything on the medal that she wanted it eventually became called the miraculous medal because of how many miracles were linked to it but at lords france there's actually a scientific and a medical certified bureau that investigates the miracles to give them the term certified And a miracle has to be incurable. It has to be paralysis or it has to be an incurable uh, disease. And the cure has to not be partial. It has to be instantaneous. And then they have to come back a year later and prove that the miracle has not, or that, that the miracle lasted, that the disease did not get healed and then return for a relapse. And I don't know what the correct number is, but most people don't get healed there, but hundreds have had certified instantaneous incurable diseases or paralysis get 100% instantaneously healed there and not have some sort of a relapse uh, within a year 
after the incident to get the term certified. And the medical bureau has people there that are devil's advocates that are not biased, that are trying to disprove the miracles that happened there. And there's actually an insurance company in Ireland that actually pays people to go to Lourdes, France, because even the people that don't get healed physically there, which most people do not experience a physical healing there, they experience some sort of a change of heart or a grace or an experience that is very positive for them and very good for their mental and emotional and spiritual health, which is also good for a person's physical health as well. So, you know, Mary has some amazing things that are linked and she has prophesied about events that take place in the future before they happen. And at Guadalupe, as I said, none of the fathers of Protestantism were able to convert, you know, 15 million people in a short amount of time. The Virgin Mary left that image on Juan Diego's Tilma. Millions converted in a very short amount of time. An Aztec empire that was evil, barbaric, that was sacrificing people on top of their pyramids, cutting off, heart, cutting out beating hearts and things like that. They converted over that miracle and Central America then our Lady of Guadalupe, her image became reprinted many times, and all of Central America now has strong devotion to her. South America has strong devotion to her. She started this huge, enormous conversion among the Central and South Americans and became known as the Empress of America. And scientists have examined the tilma at Guadalupe, the miraculous tilma, and they say this image is not a painting. This and it it's very similar to Revelations chapter 12, a woman in the sky standing on the moon, clothed with the sun. The, the image of Guadalupe, she's got she's surrounded in rays of sunlight and she's standing on the moon. And the scientists that have examined the image say that not only is there no paint, it's not a painting. There's no there would be brush strokes and there would be paint and all this detectable stuff if it was a painting, but it's on cactus fiber that should have decomposed. There was a bomb placed in front of it in a vase and it blew up the crucifix and everything around it, but didn't blow up the image. Acid was thrown on it, didn't, did not harm the image. And no Protestant reformers, all the Protestant fathers combined did not do something so incredible as the Blessed Virgin Mary did just with one single miracle. And that's not the greatest thing the Blessed Virgin Mary has done. At Fatima, Portugal, the Blessed Virgin Mary gave us specific instructions on how we could have avoided World War II. She said World War II is coming as a consequence of mankind's sins. She didn't call it World War II. She said it was 1917, and she said a second and a greater war is coming in the reign of Pius XI. She even told us the name of the pope that would reign at the time. And she mentioned the communism will rise in Russia. The errors of communism will spread. She said the errors of Russia will spread throughout the world, causing many wars. She asked for the Pope and all the bishops to consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart and said God wishes to establish devotion to her Immaculate Heart to save sinners and save the world. Okay, and shortly after the Pope made the consecration, communism, the Soviet Union fell and Russia became a Christian country. It's not a good Christian country. Look at what's going on in Ukraine is not good at all. That's terrible, but it did fall and it did become a relatively, it went from being a militantly atheist country to being a rather devoutly Christian country, only they're not abiding by all the Christian precepts. They're, what's going on in Ukraine is not a Christian action, but I'm just saying, you know, something drastically changed in Russia, the miraculous fall of militant atheism and, and, and then the country becoming, you know, this devoutly staunch Christian country did actually happen. And, um, and so things that, and the, and the Virgin Mary told two of the children, you will join me in heaven shortly. Two of the children died of something similar to COVID shortly after she, they said they would join her in heaven. The children were kidnapped by communists and taken to an adult, adult jail, threatened with boiling oil. They did not take back their story, and they got prisoners and inmates in jail to pray the rosary and even guards, according to testimonies. Um, they promised a miracle on October 13th, 1917, for everyone that shows up at the Cova de Iria, Fatima, Portugal would see a miracle of, and they didn't say what it would be. They just said, there's a sign that everyone's going to see a crowd of 70,000 people showed up and witnessed uh, the sun throw off different colors that it doesn't normally sh throw off. You could stare at the sun without it hurting your eyes. And then the sun began to plunge down on the crowd and people became hysterical and frightened and petrified and got on their knees and thought the world was ending. And many of these people claimed that they were communist or atheists because 
Portugal was a very militantly atheist government at that time that kidnapped the children and communist atheists or people with Marxist views showed up to mock the event who had no religious belief and were very anti-Catholic showed up to mock the event and actually converted over the event and wrote about it. There's nothing in Protestantism, you know, in the times of Christ, he did some things equally amazing, but there's nothing Protestant fathers or Protestant leaders or founders of these man-made Protestant denominations have done like the miracle of Fatima or these faith healers and evangelicals and Pentecostals and all that. They haven't done all of them combined. What have they got to show for like that? You know, so there is something that's guiding the Catholic Church, something amazing. I, I think the hierarchy's done some disgusting things and some very terrible things, but the Catholic Church has also done more to feed the hungry, to give to the needy, to shelter the homeless, to, uh, you know, build hospitals and build schools and influence the world in a very positive way to relieve a lot of suffering. And for many, many centuries, it was the Catholic Church that was the only church preaching the scriptures and the gospels and things like that. For many centuries, it was only the Catholic church. I mean, the Bible is a book that doesn't even tell you which books belong in the Bible. Scripture says all scripture is inspired by God, but that's talking about the Old Testament because that Paul's, whoever said it in the New Testament said all scripture is inspired by God, which is true, I guess. I don't know, but that's what it says. But they were talking about the Old Testament because the New Testament, nobody knew what the New Testament was. The New Testament canon is a tradition of the Catholic Church. Protestants accept the Catholic Church's authority in declaring which books belong in the New Testament because the New Testament, none of the books in the New Testament, you know, the, the writings of Paul and people that wrote the New Testament do not begin every book saying, this is the inspired word of God. It was the church that determined of all the writings of Jesus Christ, which ones are the inspired word of God. So Protestants actually accept Catholic church authority and tradition declaring which books belong to the New Testament canon and the first Christian Bible. So when, when the people writing the New Testament said all scripture is inspired by God, they were talking about the Old Testament because the New Testament didn't exist. They, people didn't know what the New Testament was. There was a bunch of writings floating around that people said or thought maybe were inspired by God, but nobody actually knew what the New Testament was. So they were talking about the Old Testament. Just remember that. And just because all scripture is inspired by God, that doesn't mean it's the final and ultimate authority. There needs to be an official interpreter, and Jesus Christ left the church to be the official interpreter. And the catechism is inspired and by the Holy Spirit and guided by the Holy Spirit. The magisterium is inspired and guided by the Holy Spirit too. Just because scripture is inspired by God doesn't mean that's the only thing that's inspired by God because Protestants already admit the Catholic Church was inspired by God when they decided which books were going to be in the first Christian Bible and the New Testament canon. So just remember that. God bless you. Pray for me to receive enlightenment and to do God's will. Take care.